Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. And today we have a special guest for you, Street Beef Scrapyards, Buddy V. Buddy V, welcome to MMA Underground, presented by Yankee and the Brit. We uh, appreciate you being here so much. And I'll just tell you, I just went through and watched some of your fights again, so I'm really excited to talk to you. All right. Heck yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Yeah, that's totally fine, man. The Aztec Warrior is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite things that's been said before a fight. Obviously, detail fighting Shinigami is still the top of. If you don't know me, you're gonna know me. But like, of, yeah. be, that's just because of what happened. But just going the Aztec Warrior, woo, 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 and then breaking your hand on somebody is pretty, pretty cool, man. Uh, do you want to <laughs> let every? <laughs> yeah, do you want to let everybody know about your hand and how it's all going? <laughs> Yeah, it's going good. I didn't even realize so after the end of the fight, um, I was kind of bummed and like I kind of hit my head on the ground and I felt the shock. And afterwards, the ref came up and was like, "Oh, you kind of, I think you're gonna get broke something. You're gonna have to get that checked out." But um, I when I rewatched the video, I was trying to see when when exactly it happened, and it was I'm pretty sure in that first round, there's an overhand right where I hit Doughboy, and it kind of got him and like uh, gave him a little gash right here. And I'm pretty sure that's the one that got me too. So we both ended up having at least a cool little scar from that. <laughs> Yeah, that's an amazing thing about adrenaline. You can have a broken hand and not even know it until after the fight is over. Oh, yeah. I was like, what the heck? I was sitting there with ice on here. I was like, oh, I'm going to watch a few more fights. I'm trying to watch before I leave. <laughs> <laughs> that's so hardcore, man. That is the most street beef shit I have ever heard in my entire life. Just like <laughs> breaking your hand on somebody and just going for it. I absolutely love it. And that's what's that's what's so great about the street beefs, man. And it's crazy. They uh, menaced Mike over in uh, the OG yard, just broke his hand, too, like a week after. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that uh, uh, you guys break your hands, but we hate to see it happen. But my first question for you, though, is, like, what got you into fighting and how did you find Street Beef Scrapyard? I've always kind of been into, like, uh, like very physical like sports and, like, wrestling. And uh, when I was in high school, you know, just some fun boxing from summer school stuff here and there. Um uh, but with Street Beast, it was interesting because I started watching the fights. I was like, man, that'd be cool to be a part of Street Beast. One day I'm going to be a part of Street Beast. And I didn't have any social media. And my, I believe it was my uncle told my girl uh, that, oh, there's actually going to be one hosted up here in Washington. And so she looked it up and fell a scrapyard. And right when she looked it up, it was a week after the event. So I was like, oh, what the heck? And I saw that it was actually located up here, ran by Fire Chicken. So instantly the next event I had her sign me up. And I was like, I got to get out here. I got to check it out for, this, for, for the second event I went out. And I just fell in love. I was like, this is even better than what they show on YouTube, what you could even imagine what it's like. This is, I want to be a part of this. That's really cool. So then um, did that make you like want to train more? And I, you, I really appreciate watching your fights because I like aggressive fighters. You guys are exciting and you are always moving forward. Heck yeah. It, it definitely helps me want to train a lot more too because it's – um. In a way, I guess I'm kind of fighting myself, too, because how hard am I training? How hard am I pushing myself? And I feel like I've consistently improved in some area for every single fight I've had. And uh, camaraderie, where everyone's, damn, you improved this. Oh, you actually got these. Whoa, you know how to block these now. You don't just sit there and take them in a weird way. It's It kind of really drives you to want to even go even further because you see everyone else improving their ways, too. And you're just like, man, how can I get better? How could I make sure that the next time I come out with a win or if I'm winning, I keep winning? Yeah, and what's that like to kind of train as an amateur, an amateur athlete? Like, what's the struggles that you have to go through with that? And what would you say to somebody who's trying to train as an amateur athlete? What would be your like top tips for that? I would definitely say try to uh, join a gym because I've started training by myself, and now I have other people I work with that go to gyms. But uh, hurry up and get that first fight out the way because then you'll know everything you got to work on. I thought I was like, oh, you know, I lift some weights, I run here and there, it's whatever, you know. No, that first fight showed me so much that everything that was wrong with me. And I was like, the only way you know is if you start off and then you can just go off all your failures and you're like, hey, let me correct these first and then I can work on everything else. So then from life struggles, it's hard. I mean, when I, the, after my first fight, well, I was working over 70 hours a week. So just trying to get the time to be able to spend time with my kids and train was uh, definitely difficult. So you have to take your priorities straight. Like, no, I'm, I guess I'm not going to watch TV or play no video games. If I have one hour at night, I'm going to work out, going to make sure I get this. Because if not, when the fight comes, I'm going to get punched and look like, ooh. <laughs> and anybody who watches Street Beast knows your training and everything because 
I've seen you in BJJ matches. I've seen you in MMA matches. I've seen you box. I've seen you kickbox. So it looks like you're just trying to work on it all right now. And it, you, when I watch you fight, win or lose, you have a smile on your face. You have the best attitude. And like I said, it's amazing because you just are always moving forward. It's just, is that always, a, is that how you've always been? Just hit something straight on head first? Yeah, it's, I've, uh, I don't know why. I just very uh, hit problems head on. Even like in my fights, uh, if I played football, you know, a lot of people when they're running back to try to juke and hit runs, I would just go straight on. I don't care how big the person is. I don't care the size difference. I'm going head on. If I lose, I'm, I'm going out, giving it 100%. And I feel like that's also part of my issue with my fighting is I want to go 100%. I push the pace a little more than I should and stay more composed and slowly empty the gas chamber a little faster than I want. <laughs> but that's what's great about Street Beast because you can – hone your skills in a place um, in street beefs as you're getting better and see what you need to work on and see like, Hey, I should work on takedown defense or whatever it may be. And it's not something that if you decide to go do this further on in your life, it's not going to go against your record. Exactly. And that's the cool part too. You know, it's, if I really ever wanted to go pursue something bigger, like uh, Gumby did when he left the yard, it's not going to affect any record he has. I mean, he has all wins though. <laughs> But uh, I definitely think it, it's fun. I mean, even if I never do it on a, at a bigger level, I definitely want to still always be a part of Street Beefs. Yeah, Street Beefs does some amazing things. And Maddie and I talk about it all the time, how it's just growing and growing. And how uh, there's going to be the Virginia invasion coming up with Street Beef Scrapyard, i seen. And I even see you went down and boxed in uh, Street, uh, Street Beefs West Coast. Yes, I was I was I was really upset with myself. I came very excited. I was running almost five miles every day. And to think that my cardio is what really killed me. Um, it was embarrassing. So <laughs> but uh, it was like just as cool down there too. the environment. The same It's run different, very different vibe. But still the overall camaraderie, you feel welcome. You just you enjoy every second of being there. Yeah, you can tell from the outside like that each chapter has its own kind of different identity like the og the og yard looks like the scrappiest like it's where like it's kind of down and day the california one's like a bit more rugged i guess and then the and then um scrapyard has managed to kind of find its way of having cool camera angles replays like the production value is really hard fire chicken's done a great job out at that one and you can see like the camaraderie on the screen as as well as we hear about, we're lucky enough to hear about it off it because we get the chance to interview all these guys. So it's nice to hear that the camaraderie is good in West Coast as well. Do you have aspirations to fight in the OG yard too? Yeah, I'm so mad I broke my hand because I wanted to go. Uh, that was actually one of my next ventures for uh, May, June, and July. I was going to apply for both the OG yard and the West Coast. And every opportunity I had, I had money set aside to go make sure I could fight. I was I already had my diet, my workout set, and I wanted to go and uh, – really make a name for myself because after my most recent fight with Doughboy and even Hitmon Lee, it showed me, even though I'm building technique, there's so much more I need to once again, continually work on. And I was really going to be on buckle down, uh, uh, being in the Northwest, you know, I smoke some cheapy Chiba and sometimes that kind of <laughs> doesn't always let me work out. or <laughs> So I was going to just really put everything on a halt and just go a hundred percent all the way balls to the wall. No, that's really awesome. And, uh, I love the fact that because Maddie and I have talked about this with Jay Gonham and other guys about and we know the money and logistics gets in the way. But just in the fantasy world of every yard, bring 10 guys, 10 weight classes. Let's meet somewhere and let's just, you know, have like a tournament um, OG and West Coast and, you know, scrapyard. And the thing with watching you guys at the scrapyard is it feels more like. So with the scrapyard, you get a lot of rain and stuff. With the OG yard, it always seems cold and dingy. And then if you get to the West Coast, it's like, hey, I could be there. That looks like some nice weather. But you guys <laughs> always seem to be fighting in some rain or slush or mud or something. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely glad that we got the turf now, too. I mean, I don't mind getting muddy, but, you know, sometimes when you're still picking it out of your hair and your ears a couple of days later, you're like, man, what the heck? <laughs> the most epic picture of you is that comic that um, picture that you sent because it's I saw the picture on your Facebook or Instagram I don't remember but that's you after a fight right just covered in mud turned into a comic book character. 
Heck yeah. Uh, that was after my first fight with Gumby. Steve was just started doing a couple of the, um, the edits for some of the fighters, and that ended up being one of them. I was like, what? And because I think that day we actually had a photographer and wanted to come out. He photographed all the fights. He took photos of all the different fighters, did this and that. And there was a lot of really good action shots. And that one, I think, really spoke because we were just, yeah, head to toe, covered in dirt. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think your best fight's been? Like, when you when you look back on your fights and stuff, what do you think? The one that you learned the most from or the one that you were most proud of? What was your favorite fight you've had so far? Ooh, that's that's a tough one. I Honestly, I feel like the, my favorite one, of course, is going to be my Buddy V versus J-Lou. Because that first round and that power, I was just... Uh, that day, I fought Gash and J-Lou, and J-Lou was my second fight. And I came went in nervous because I got I hurt my foot with Gash. So I was like, oh, let's see. And... So I just kind of zone out when the cage locks. I just get in the zone, you know, we're there to, to put work in. And I came out a lot happier than I expected. So <laughs> that has to be my best one. The second That's one, the fight. Oh, sorry. That's okay. the fight where uh, he was outstanding, right? Yeah, like he stopped and he was like, uh, uh, time out, yeah. time out. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like he didn't know. Like you hit him so solid. Me and my wife were actually watching that together. And she's like, whoa, what just happened? Because she looked down at her phone and I said he hit him square in the chin and for a second, dude didn't know where he was. That was a solid punch. Thank you, thank you. I I try to make sure I power my left, so that way even if the right misses, that power's going to hit. Yeah, and then you were mentioning your second favorite fight as well is what you were about to go on to as well. I actually really liked my fight um, with Gash because she hit me with a couple really good power shots. I feel like for, there, the way I break it down is slightly weird because it's a kickboxing match. I felt like she out kickboxed me. I felt like I outboxed her. And that's why when they went to the judges, they probably like it was very close in a sense. But that's why I feel like it might have gone over the top just because I had a little bit better boxing. But for kickboxing, no. I, there's a few times where my leg was starting to feel those kicks and she has some force. Holy crap. So I was, uh, that's definitely one where I trained my hardest. And the fact that I did two in one day, I feel like that really was one of my shining moments. The one I learned from the most was definitely Gumby though, because uh, that showed me, like I said, the first fight ever showed me how little I had, how little my cardio was, my knowledge, just everything in general. It was just uh, a real eye opener. Well, it was good for you to say that because a lot of people don't know that sometimes you guys fight more than once in a day too, because if you go on YouTube, you see them at separate fights and, um, you're not always watching them in order or, you know, and a lot of people don't recognize that you did that. So that's what takes a lot on the cardio to begin with. Oh, yeah. And I didn't realize it like, because uh, I didn't feel that, okay, cardio is cardio. And people break it down, you know, there's wrestling cardio, there's striking cardio. You're going to get winded if you take too many hits to the gut, to the head, your body's going to catch up. So even though you could run, you know, five, six, seven miles, if you're not used to being able to pace yourself, catch your breath, do this and that, you know, it's all going to catch up to you in the end and you're going to fall round short, two round short. <laughs> yeah. They call, it match fit- they call it match fitness right. here in the UK. Like that's what, uh, that's what, that's what we say. So a football player can run for miles and miles and miles every day, but until he's played 90 minutes of a, so, sorry, soccer to you guys, if he's played 90 minutes of a football game, he'll be knackered if he hasn't played that 90 minutes. So when you do your friendlies, that's how you get fitter and fitter and fitter. And it's, it's a total different type of fitness. And I find that, I found that so incredibly interesting that they break down cardio into like so many separate things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because like in different sports, like in fighting, everything's depending where you fight two, three, five minutes of all this energy, a minute of rest, where American football is what you have 12 seconds, 13 seconds of, you know, hard play. And then you between but when you're fighting, you're going all the time and you only get a minute in between rounds. But my next question is, what's your target for the next time you think you'll be able to start training and maybe fight again? I definitely, my target is to be just a completely different me. Um, there's a lot of, part of when I joined Street Peace, so I was starting to change my life. Uh, I don't go to bars anymore. You know, I don't mess around with a handful of other like paraphernalia and whatnot. So it's definitely just getting my life together in order. And I felt like every fight, every event, I've just been stepping towards my goal a lot more. And um, I've been doing some fitness with some people, training a few people, not fighting training, but just like getting in better health. And my goal is to officially finish my test, become certified, and uh, being able to pursue a little bit more of my fitness, do my competitions. I'm part of, I'm going to do Spartan Race, Tough Mudder, and a couple other ones. 
and just stay very physically active in the fitness community. So that way, like my Zwell, that's my um, stuff. I drew my logo, did my own stuff. And it's part of a, like a marketing thing. So that I, I fight, I do competitions, I go further. And now I'm going to train harder so I can come out and win. Now that I know what I have to do, when I broke everything down to the point where I can just still go higher and higher. So now instead of one step, I'm going to take leaps. I'm going to take jumps and then see my goals come a lot closer. So instead of 10 to 15 years, I'm going to see them in five years or eight years and just slowly get there a lot faster. Yeah, and do you do you credit Street Beast with a lot of that? Like you getting to fight into Street Beast, changing the way you looked at everything? Oh, that's 100%. Because I always thought it'd be cool to join a gym or, you know, go fight somewhere. But it was kind of like, oh, but with Street Beef, so it's like the videos were on YouTube. And it's like, well, you know, a lot of people are going to see this. So I don't want to be a complete, you know, F up. And um, once I got there, yeah, just the overall, just how everything was, how it was ran, how everyone was so friendly. It just, I had one, you go in and you think something's going to be one way. And then I just had a completely different point of view as soon as I experienced it my perspective was completely changed and uh it changed a lot of my goals too so I'm very grateful for Streepies being there yeah and we like you see a lot of people growing that kind of way we talk to most of the people in Street Beefs and it's like oh it, it helped me change my life around like it's given me something to work towards and it's it's part of that putting it on YouTube and the fact that you you didn't really do much combat fighting before Street Beefs like Street Beefs was your First fight, whereas some of these guys who are like unbeaten and like Jay Garm and stuff and Preacher's son and uh, then like Shinigami and Big Smile and stuff, they have combat training beforehand. So people need to give you the chance to like grow as a fighter as well as growing as a person as well. So like, that's really great. You actually, um, you actually remind me of somebody I was talking to for another podcast that I do on travel. And he was like, well, the first time I went and traveled, I went to this luxury resort thing, didn't really learn anything but realized that it would help me get better in another way. And then I've got more and more like experience of traveling in like different environments and that helped me grow as a person. So it's like, as you grow as a fighter or in your passion, you grow as a person. And that's really great to see, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I think that street beast does so much good. And anybody who goes back, like I, we, we've talked about it a, a ton of times, but goes back why Scarface even started the OG yard and, where everything comes from, you know, um, hands up, guns down. But I was curious too, is like, how long before you can start training again, that hand, how long before you'll be able to get back in there? I'm kind of bummed. Cause I know I'm, uh, within this next month, I don't know. Well, they're going to do a review after and I'm going to do some, um, physical therapy. He said, realistically, I'm probably gonna have to wait a minimum of like, you know, three months, four months before I actually start trying to grip some heavy weights and do some serious stuff. Um, probably I figure around, you know, five months, I'll be able to start actually maybe hitting the bag lightly. Uh, realistically, I might take it easier on the hands and just focus on my lower body. And I'm doing a lot more like PJJ just so I can let it fully heal. I was thinking about taking maybe, you know, eight months, nine months, uh, to wait, to be able to get back into a fight. So that way I can be fully healed. I feel like I don't want to be stupid, try to go out too soon, injure myself and then be out another X amount of months and just look like a fool. <laughs> if you... If you hit training as head on as you do fighting in that cage, there's no doubt in my mind that we will see a brand new Buddy V in eight months when he comes back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and then just just like the final question and stuff, what's the what's the end goal? Like 10, 15 years down the future. Like I know you said you're trying to shorten your goals and so they're more attainable and stuff like that. But what's what's the main goal? It's Zul, isn't it? Is the is yeah, the like, what's yeah, the well, it's part of my last name, Valenzuela. Right. Okay. Great. What's that? So, what's the what's the main goal for that? Where do you want to see that go? Where do you want it to be? I want it to be a little bit more self sustaining, um, because not just with improving myself fighting, but improving myself for fitness wise. My goals are to eventually get first, second, third place in these competitions, and then you get more. You go to nationals, and you know some of those have prizes five hundred thousand dollars, this and that. So to the point where I become self sustaining with my fitness, to where I can fight if I want. If not, I could just be actively a part of it. Um, I could do collaborations with all sorts of other people, whether it's fighters, fitness, um, different artists as well. And just, uh, I have a list of a couple of weird things. You know, I have some famous people I want to meet. Uh, Mr. Cartoon, one of the tattooers, I want to get him to do my back piece one day. I eventually want to maybe make, meet the Diaz brothers, you know, I like that kind of attitude they have. And, uh, I mean, you know, being Mexican, I always like to have some people from, you know, Latin Hispanic background. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya being one of my favorite fighters. It'd be cool to meet him, but Golden Boy. <laughs> 
So. Yeah, and your energy is electric, my man. So once people find out about you, the sky is the limit. Fighting, just talking to you right now, you have this electric energy coming off of you, and it's contagious. Yeah, and it's like I can see people definitely wanting to work with you. And if you want to work with us anytime, man, then we're we're ready. We've got lots of uh, we've got other projects that we'd like to have you involved with as well. Just because, like, if you want this zuel thing to keep going and st- uh, stuff like that then just get in contact anytime you want man. thank you i don't want you down uh it's funny because i actually from the travels the one fight even though i wasn't part of my west coast fight i met so many people i stay in contact with now and there's actually one guy uh i'm doing his logo right now for him a uh, shout out to moose yeah <laughs> and uh I shout got- out. yeah I showed a handful of other people. I do a lot of the stuff. I yeah, do my logos. I make keychains by hand. I, I do my shirts with, uh, you know, like uh, I'm getting this vinyl press. I was doing silk screen. You know, I try to do a lot of it all myself. And so that way it's, it shows my hard work and my dedication. So that way if someone tries to discredit what I do, I can sit here and show the hours I put in research, the hours I took into fighting, into making what I do. So that way I can back up everything I say 100% with facts. <laughs> yeah, you just hit life like a freight train, man. Like you, you, you hit life like you hit that guy. Like you hit that guy when he was standing, like just knocked out. Thought he was in the UK sipping tea, probably. Heck Do you yeah. have a pl- Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just said heck yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, is there a place where people can go buy your merch right now, or is that something you're still working on? Fifty fifty. So I have the Teespring for as well, where I have um the the logo I did here and like a, an improved version of the Makwa heel that I have up here. This is actually the very first shirt I ever made. Uh. The website I'm going to be doing this the end of this week where I'm going to have bandanas and a few other stuff put on there so I can uh, eventually uh, send you guys a link. It'll It's zuelworld.com is the domain that I ended up picking up because the way I figure it, it's my world. It's my life. it's This is how I live. Who's going to tell me that I can't fight? Nobody. I'm, I'm on street beefs. Who's going to tell me I can't go to a competition? Nobody. I went out bought a ticket and I'm going out there. Who's going to tell me I can't eat spicy food? Nobody. I don't care if that toilet regrets the next day, but give me that hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And when we get the links, we will share them with everybody so you can watch for that. And thank you so much, Buddy V, for giving us your time. I really appreciate it. And like I said, you're a really exciting fighter to watch, so I can't wait for you to heal up and we can watch you fight some more. Oh, thank you so much. I want to give you guys something to show next time. I want to go out there a whole like a brand new me. You're not even going to know that I fought before. <laughs> Sounds great. I can't wait to see it, man. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Cheers, buddy. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, all other podcasting platforms. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio.